Another question. Suffering might lead a righteous person to fall in a sin. Why would our loving God allow that such a good person to be tempted and fall? You know, suffering is different from temptation because all people should suffer. That's the result of the fall of Adam and Eve. That's the corrupted nature in everyone. So we all suffer in different ways. And suffering will end only with the eternal life. In this life, we should cry, we should suffer. That's, you know, the result or the outcome of the sin of our forefathers, Adam and Eve. That's why we all, by all means, we suffer. So, suffering nowadays, after the suffering of the Lord himself on the cross, we gain the fruits of his redemption. Now when we suffer, we share his crucifixion. Now when we suffer, we come closer to him. When we suffer, we will be crowned in heaven for this suffering. So suffering is not against us anymore. In the New Testament, we will make use of this suffering as offering to God. When you suffer, you learn how to pray. When you suffer, you learn how to be patient. When you suffer, you gain wisdom. When you suffer, you feel the sufferings of others. When you suffer, you think of heaven more than you think of this time, of this land. So suffering, you know, is like a school of virtues. When you suffer, you will get many good things in your life. And according to the promises given by the Lord, he never promised his people not to suffer. Actually, he promised his people that they will suffer more. But his promises were always about the eternal life, the kingdom of heaven. So when you speak about suffering, it's not, you know, the way to sin. It's the way to be pure. It's the way to come closer to God. But because man still have his free will, he may choose to get, you know, the negative side of suffering and to do more sin. But most of the people, according to their belief in God, they will take the positive side of suffering and they will pray more and they will get the fruits of suffering.